When you think of an ultra-luxurious tier one luxury player, the Lincoln Motor Company may not be the first car company that you think of when you wanna buy a vehicle in this segment. In fact, Lincoln began a really long journey to reinvent themselves back in 2018 with the introduction of the all new Navigator. However, for 2024, Lincoln is ready to start the next chapter in that reinvigoration with the introduction of this vehicle. This is the brand new 2024 Lincoln Nautilus, a mid-sized two row luxury SUV and the brand's best selling model here in the US. As you can see, it's riding on an all new platform. It gets way more elegant styling. It gets a new fuel efficient hybrid powertrain underneath the hood. And for you tech junkies out there, it has the biggest standard infotainment system in its class at 48 inches stretching from pillar to pillar. So this week, as you can see, Lincoln has loaned us this gorgeous red carpet, red metallic Lincoln Nautilus Reserve with the uh, jet black appearance package and the big question I want to answer. For those of you who are looking for the ultimate two row luxury SUV and you want something that's a lot different versus the other Japanese or European entries that your neighbors may be driving. How does the brand new 2024 Lincoln Nautilus stack up? Stay tuned to find out. So obviously compared to the old Nautilus, Lincoln really changed the exterior design a lot. Before, before we talk about the new look of the vehicle, let's go ahead and pop the hood and show you guys what's powering this thing. Now here in America, Lincoln will offer a choice between two different engines. Both of them will have a two liter turbocharged four cylinder. However, for an extra 1500 bucks, you may wanna specify this hybrid option because it does give you way more power and way better fuel efficiency. Now underneath the hood, you're gonna find basically a new powertrain for Lincoln and the first ever hybrid version of the Nautilus. It pairs uh, up the two liter turbocharged gasoline direct injection four cylinder with two electric motors that have around 100 kilowatts of power on their own. Uh, the gas engine on its own delivers around 300 horsepower, 295 foot pounds of torque. The electric motor delivers another 134 horsepower. However, if you combine the two outputs, Lincoln says you get a maximum of 310 horsepower combined. They don't quote the actual torque figure combined. Uh, that is around 60 more horsepower versus the base gas engine, which is this two liter turbo four minus the electric componentry. Uh, so again, it does have a nice healthy boost in power. Still not as powerful as the old twin turbo V6, but it's paired up with an electronic CVT transmission. Uh, and it gets way better fuel efficiency, 30 in the city and 31 on the highway. That's a six MPG improvement over the gas only version of this car. Pair it of course with that big 20 gallon fuel tank and theoretically you could go around 600 miles of range on a full tank. 600 miles of range makes this easily double the range capacity of all those you know full electric SUVs that you might be cross shopping this vehicle with. Now Lincoln doesn't quote a zero to 60 time. We'll try it out when we get it out on the road. I estimate it should be in the uh, upper six seconds range. It should have a top speed of just shy of 150 miles an hour. And this vehicle, if you want to tow, still will tow a maximum of 1,750 pounds. So not great, but again, way better fuel efficiency. The curb weight of this car uh, with the hybrid system and standard all wheel drive, that's right, every Nautilus is all wheel drive for 2024, uh, comes in at just over 4,700 pounds. The lightest versions of this car should weigh in at around 4,300 pounds. But let's go ahead and close up this hood and talk about the exterior styling. First of all, Lincoln has gone through several different trends when it comes to their exterior design. However, I think with this new Nautilus, they finally have introduced something that's going to stick and this thing looks elegant, it looks modern, it looks futuristic, but it also looks very aggressive. It looks much more masculine compared to the previous generation. This exterior color that I'm showing you is exclusive to the reserve trim, I believe. It's called red carpet metallic. It certainly has a very bold, crystally red to it. It's kind of similar to like Mazda's Soul Red crystal color. And then you can see uh, this reserve three package that I'm showing you has the upgraded full LED headlights with an LED daytime running light, LED turn signal. There's also an LED light bar that comes in and goes through the grill and it illuminates the Lincoln Star logo. That's standard when you go for the reserve trims and up. The vehicle also does kind of like a welcome sequence dance whenever you approach the vehicle at night, or it'll also do a goodbye dance when you walk away the car. It certainly adds to the whole theatrics of the vehicle, which I think is really nice. You can see the grill. It's the updated Lincoln grill with the star logo, the jet appearance package that my test car has for 3000 bucks. 
blacks out the grill and, and the front fascia accents versus the bright chrome work. There are some active grill shutters, front camera, of course, integrated parking sensors, more aggressive air intakes at the lower fascia, along with the sensors for the Lincoln Copilot 360. Blue Cruise is actually standard on all versions of the Nautilus, but you do have to pay extra if you guys want to have it uh, past the 90 day trial period. I also really love the way the headlights look. Again, you should expect to see this front fascia making its way into other Lincoln products as we move forward. Uh, now moving around the side profile, you can see this is built on an all new C2 architecture. It shares this platform, of course, with the next generation Edge, Ford Edge, and the other vehicles like the uh, Ford Bronco Sport or the Ford Escape, but it's been stretched out, of course, for the Nautilus. Its wheelbase is 114.2. Its overall length is 193 and a half inches. So this is about three inches longer than the pri previous generation and around two inch longer in the wheelbase. It's about an inch wider. So it has wonderful proportions. This is about the same size as something like a Lexus RX. That's what Lincoln views as the main competitor. I definitely find this to be a much more interesting and elegant vehicle than the RX. Uh, even the current one, you can see the wheels with the jet appearance package on this reserve three. You get these massive 22 inch multi-spoke black finished wheels. Uh, riding on a 255 by 45 R22 Goodyear all season tire. I believe you have like a 13.8 inch rotor at the front, a slightly smaller 12 and a half inch rotor at the back. All independent suspension, no air suspension, but you do, you do get adaptive dampers included with this trim, uh, which is definitely nice if you wanna change out the ride quality. I love the full paint finish along the wheel arch trim. You can see down there, it does have some gloss black around the side sill. You also have the Nautilus badge along the side here. This little keyhole is if the power ever goes out, you can access the vehicle through an actual key fob. The mirrors are power folding, integrated turn signals, cameras surrounding, uh, are surrounding the car as well. Then you can see the roof is painted all black. And then you get that panoramic Vista roof, which is standard on the reserve three trim. It's part of an option package, of course. And then of course, being a Lincoln and Ford, you do have their keyless entry keypad there. The door handles, you can see, it's actually a little button at the back here. Uh, but it kind of just sits there at the top. It certainly looks a lot more futuristic. And from the side profile here, this car really does turn a lot of heads. I mean, just look at it. It doesn't look like any other Lincoln before it. I think the company did a phenomenal job with the exterior design. In fact, a lot of people look at it and they're actually confused at the fact that it's a Lincoln because when you look at the back of the vehicle, it really just doesn't give off Lincoln vibes to me. It looks more like an Audi, for example, or uh, I don't know, it's just like another more upscale brand with that full LED light bar. You can see there's a uh, little spoiler at the back at the back here, an integrated spoiler. The turn signals also have a sequential design to them. The LED light blade also uh, does a sequence or a sequence dance whenever you walk up to the vehicle or uh, walk away from it. You can see it's there's a Lincoln spelled out in, the, in that little portion over there, which actually is kind of hard to see. Uh, it does illuminate at night, obviously. And then down here, you can see no visible exhaust tips. There is a dual exhaust system but it's kind of tucked away under the bumper. A lot of new cars are going away from exposed exhaust because again, this is a hybrid, but there's no indication that this is a hybrid at all. There's not a single hybrid badge. There's no blue badges anywhere. So it's kind of nice how Lincoln just makes this car very subtle. You can't tell it's the more fuel efficient model. Now you can see the power lift gate is standard. It's also a hands-free power lift gate. And because of the Nautilus's size, you get a pretty good size trunk as well. Just under 36 cubic feet of space. There's no third row optional on this vehicle. Buy a Lincoln Aviator if you guys want a third row, but you can see there's a little bit of storage off to the side which is nice if you look underneath here there's a temporary spare tire uh, which i also really appreciate along with the jack and the tools there's a little bit of underfloor storage as well and then if you want to fold down these seats you can basically just push a button right here uh, and that seat will typically fold down completely, but with the seats all folded, you get just under 69 cubic feet of total storage space. That's about uh, 20 more cubic feet versus what you get in the current generation Lexus RX. So the outside of the new Lincoln Nautilus is obviously stunning, especially in this red carpet metallic exterior color. But let's go ahead and talk about the interior because again, I mentioned in the beginning, this car has a massive 48 inch uh, screen that basically goes from pillar to pillar on the dash. But before we get inside, let's take a look at the key fob. You can see if you guys are familiar with a lot of Ford and Lincoln products, you'll recognize this intelligent access key. There's a Lincoln badge on the back. I don't love how big the key is. It also feels too much like a Ford key in the materials. I think it's time for Lincoln to do their own unique brand new key but you can see there's usual buttons here for unlock lock remote start power lift gate and panic function lincoln also lets you use their phone as a key if you're an owner so that can kind of get you around not having to use this key fob uh, when you lock the vehicle you can see uh, the door handles will or the mirrors will fold in and you can also 
have it make like a little beep sound, which is definitely nice and different versus some other Ford vehicles. The one thing I noticed this car doesn't have, however, at least in my weeks worth of testing, I couldn't find it, is an auto walk away lock feature. In fact, there's no button here on the outside to actually lock the door. There is supposed to be a keypad here, but my test car actually doesn't have the option for it. But if you have the key on you or your phone on you, all you have to do essentially is just come up and just push this little pressure pad on the back of that door handle that will unlock the door for you. But again, I don't see an actual button here to lock the door. If you guys have the keypad here, there's like a button, there's like a lock button, but you can see for some reason my test car doesn't have the option or it's not turned on for some odd reason. But again, a little bit of a silly omission there. Um, to have to actually pull the key out to lock the door each time, at least for me. But overall, once you get past that, you look inside the interior, you can see uh, if you guys buy a 2024 uh, Nautilus Reserve with the black appearance package, you're going to be stuck with this onyx black interior, uh, which again has upgraded leather. It has suede Alcantara. It has this contrast copper stitching. These seats are the upgraded 24-way perfect position seats, which offer 24 different ways of adjustment. They're heated and ventilated, and they also offer a massage function. So that's included when you guys go for the Reserve three trim for an extra $10,000. These seats definitely, I've had my issue with these perfect position seats in the past, but in this car, they've been redone to be extremely comfortable for me. So I love the comfort associated with it. the heated and cooled seat function works well. I also love the metal accented controls for the uh, seat adjustments themselves. They have a really nice satisfying click to them, which adds to that impression of quality. Uh, and then if you look on the door panels here, you can see there's this big candle black plastic trim, but this actually illuminates at night with the ambient lighting. There's real leather going across the upper portion here with the contrast copper stitching, more leather over here, aluminum trim here, metal accented speakers, that 28 speaker THX audio system, or I'm sorry, Revel Ultima audio system is incredible. So if you guys are an audiophile, audiophile, highly recommend checking, ticking that option for it. You can see three person memory seats here on the driver's side, the window controls, they feel really high quality. In fact, they're accented in metal. They look a little bit bespoke versus some other Ford products. There is a little bit of Ford switch gear, but some of the other switch gear again feels, uh, unique to this car. This door handle looks like it was pulled off of a Mustang Mach-E. And then down here, unfortunately, there is a little bit of cheap plastic, but I appreciate how this edge is not sharp. So it's nice and smooth. Uh, it also gives you a little bit more storage there, which is nice. But overall, you can see the interior certainly makes a great first impression. For 2025, you can get the Jet Appearance package on the reserve with a light smoked truffle interior, which is kind of like a light gray. You got to step it up to the black label to get the Redwood theme or the Chalet theme, which is a really light white color leather or a beautiful like umber orangey uh, red interior, which kind of reminds you of a Redwood Forest. That's one of the reasons, again, to go for the black label if you want the Jet Appearance package. Now, stepping inside, you can see it has a nice, easy SUV sized step in height. As I shut the door, the door has a really solid sounding thunk. No soft closed doors. That's something that you won't typically find in this class. But again, it adds to that impression of quality. Now, as you can see here, there's a lot of screens. It's a little overwhelming at first, but when I turn the vehicle on via the start stop button, you can see here, It'll have the symphonic chimes and everything kind of just whirs to life. The engine also whirs to life because again, it's not, uh, it's a hybrid system. So there's no traditional starter noise. And then you can see here the, uh, let me just get the climate control to not be blasting so much air. Uh, but uh, you can see here with the infotainment display, this is a 48 inch curved panoramic pillar to pillar display. So it stretches from over here all the way to the other side over there, which is phenomenal. In fact, the screen itself is four feet wide across, which sounds very daunting at first, but once you get used to it, it actually is perfectly positioned right in your line of sight. If I'm looking ahead of me in front of the, in, at the road, you can kind of just glance down and see your speedometer. GPS is over here. Uh, there's also these touch sensitive buttons here on the steering wheel, which as you can see when I touch it, it also illuminates to let me know where I'm touching there. It'll do the same thing on this side over here, uh, which is really nice. And then over here, you can see you can customize the passenger side there. I have it on trip computer information, uh, audio information and weather. So I'll show you there. You don't actually touch this screen here. You wouldn't want to touch it. It's definitely too far away for that. But everything is interacting from this seven inch, or I'm sorry, this 11.1 .1 inch display here in the center where you can essentially use the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. This is running the new Lincoln Digital Experience software. So you can see there's the home screen there. If I click on that, that brings up my Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can also click on that to expand the view of the CarPlay. Now, for those of you who have the old Nautilus, you'll be surprised to see that this screen here is around two inches smaller than the previous generation, but 
I think it's okay because it's really well positioned. The graphic and resolution is much better and it also has much better software behind it. Uh, if there's one thing I'm not crazy about, it's the steering wheel design. I think the steering wheel looks a little bit too much like a mixture of old man with a little bit of modern. I actually, I like how it's a, uh, a squircle design. So it's a flat bottom and a flat top. So you can kind of see past that and you can still see the uh, upper instrument panel. Uh, and then you can see some of the buttons here are touch sensitive capacitive, they're floating. But what I don't like about this design is how dust and smudges kind of build up in these little crevices and they're kind of a pain in the butt to clean. I like how this is a stitched leather area, no paddles behind the wheel. Although I think Lincoln did add paddles for 2025. Some of the switch gear you can see for the turn signal and the wipers, they do feel more bespoke. And then this right here is the status bar uh, thing to watch your face when you have the blue cruise active to make sure that you're paying attention. The wheel itself has a power tilt telescoping design, which is what I expect in a vehicle in this class. The horn, it sounds pretty nondescript, but at least it doesn't sound like a puny little dinky horn. And then you can see over here, there's a speaker right here. Uh, on the upper dash here, this is covered in leather, which is nice. More leather stitching over here with the contrast copper accents. There's some aluminum trim splashed throughout the dash onto the dashboard over there, or from the door panel to the dashboard. And then even this upper portion here has stitched leather. And in terms of the build quality, I have to say, everything in here fits pretty nicely. I didn't see a single squeak or rattle. If I had to criticize one thing, I'd probably say this gap is a little bit larger than I would like. And it's even worse on that side over there when I zoom in you can see it's just it could be a little bit of a tighter gap but again I'm kind of nitpicking here it's hard to find some flaws in this cabin it's a really well done and luxurious place to spend time now looking over here at the center stack you can see um, going back to the Lincoln native system if you click on the car icon here this is where you can access a lot of things first of all there's a digital scent feature which right now the car is loaded with three different scents mystic forest ozonic Azuro and Sunlight Retreat. I actually really love the Mystic Forest. It even tells you how much of the scent is remaining. Um, you can buy replacement cartridges and different scents through your Lincoln dealership. I think they're $75 each. You can see once this turns on, it smells amazing. And that's where this car sets itself apart from Ford vehicles. It doesn't smell like a cheap Ford vehicle in here. It smells like a luxury car, uh, which is again, part of the whole experience. Uh, if you guys go for the black label models, there's a, a nice little option called Lincoln Rejuvenate, which essentially if the vehicle is parked, it'll turn on the massage, the sense, it'll address the mood lighting and kind of give you an, a sanctuary where you can kind of take a nap or rest in the vehicle if you guys had a long day. Uh, going to the seat controls here, this is where you can activate the massage function. You can see there's five different levels of massage with three different intensities. They're both front seats. The massage function works extremely well. You can go to the passenger side here and adjust that. The ambient lighting in this car also is excellent. Uh, you can see you can choose from, it looks like seven different colors. Uh, it starts from, of course, the door panel. It kind of spans across to the lower, uh, to the other side of the door panel and the footwells are illuminated. There's an illuminated uh, volume knob here, which is a crystal. The infotainment also looks phenomenal at night with the lighting, same thing with the center screen here. It all just adds to that ambiance that makes you feel like you're in a special vehicle. That's really important. Now going over here to this display, this is where you can find all your usual widgets and sources. There's Spotify built in. You can pull up YouTube, of course, you can pull up games, you can go to software updates, you can download things, and you can access through the Google Play Store. In fact, there's also Google built in, so you can give it voice commands. Your heated and cooled seat controls are here. And then if I click on that, this is where the car looks like it has a traditional dash vent, but you can see there's no way that you can adjust it manually. You have to adjust it here. I, I love the fact that Lincoln offers like an, a, a motion feature where if I click that, the vents will automatically oscillate and redirect the air all over the cabin. You can also go into a quick where you can do it on body, off body. You can close the vents here. Uh, I really like it on on body. Obviously there's like a, a, a cabin air filter in the vehicle where it's refreshing the air. You can also click on that to refresh the cabin where it'll, it'll filter out any, you know, pollen, any um, you know, particulates that might be harmful in the air. I'll add that in with the digital scent. It really just makes for a really nice atmosphere where you can breathe really fresh air inside the vehicle. You can see down here is your transmission selector for the uh, continuously variable transmission. If I put the vehicle into reverse, you can see, I love how the backup camera is up there. It really just provides a crystal clear view of exactly what's behind you with a top down 360 view. There's cameras or parking sensors front and rear. It has automatic cross traffic braking, all that stuff that you kind of expect um, that's included, of course, when you guys go for this higher trim. This does take a little bit of getting used to, but once you do, it has a relatively high quality feel. You can also access a couple of buttons here from your hazard to your automatic parallel parking switch. You can pull up the camera there, max defrost, of course, and then push that. It'll activate your drive mode selectors. You can see there's a total of five different drive modes, normal, conserve, excite, slippery, and deep conditions. You can also go into like a, 
uh, custom mode there if you guys would like and adjust a couple things. I also like this center console area where you have your wireless phone charging pad here, two USB charging ports, a cup holders. You can also close this lid. It's a pretty sturdy lid, uh, which is great, of course, um, for hiding anything in there. And then this, you can see the center console is nice and padded. Open this up. It gives you two more USB charging ports, an actual 12 volt. There's a good amount of storage in here. Another decent sized storage area down here, uh, which is nice. And then, like I mentioned earlier, the seats are really comfortable and supportive. I just wouldn't go for this black interior. Thankfully, from 2025, in this trim with the Jet Appearance Package, you can get it with a light uh, olive interior or just go for the um, black label trim to get either a brown interior that's kind of reddish or uh, a white interior, which is nice. You can see the glove box, open that up. It's stamped. It's lined with felt. Uh, it's a pretty decent bin style uh, glove compartment you can see over here digital or no digital camera review mirror it's an auto dimming and then above me here you can see it's a woven material for the headliner this sunroof also goes into the back seat area which is nice there's a retreat uh, there's a power retractable shade and you can also open it up to vent air which is a nice feature to have as of course so that really lets in a lot of light or some fresh air which is nice but overall you can see the interior of this new nautilus i'm simply blown away it's a wow factor of course with the screen the build quality is also excellent the technology and luxury features are great. The software is also good. So I have very little complaints. Lincoln really knew what they were doing here. And I think a lot of people who haven't been in a Lincoln in a long time and are comparing this to like a Lexus or a BMW or Mercedes, you're gonna be quite impressed with what Lincoln is offering here for this new Nautilus. Now moving to the second row of the 2024 Nautilus, you can see with this increase in the size, you're also gonna get a ton of space in the second row, which is great because if you don't need a third row, this is gonna offer plenty of room for your full-size adults to go on those longer trips. You can see the seats themselves back here. They're covered in the same plush leather and suede Alcantara with the contrast copper stitching. These seats are also heated. Sadly, Lincoln does not offer ventilated seats in the second row, at least not here in the American market. You can see back here, there's a nice leather, real leather stitching material in this upper portion with that contrast copper trim more piano black plastic although this does not illuminate at night like it does on the front so a little bit of cost cutting there i also would love to see manual retractable shades i believe actually i don't i don't think the black label has it either so that's a feature that's an oversight feature that i think lincoln should offer you can see it's nice and padded here more metal speaker covers for the revel ultima audio system and then down here you can see it's hard touch plastic but again the edge at least is nice and smooth if you want to fold down the seats um, you can actually just pull this little lever here that will fold the seat down. It almost creates a flat load floor, which is nice. The seats themselves also, I believe, have the ability to recline. So there's the recline uh, mode right there, which is definitely nice on those longer trips. Uh, and then once you get back here, you can see there's just a ton of space. In fact, once I close the door here and adjust my seat, uh, Lincoln says there's 43 inches of legroom back here. 43 makes it among the best in the class. That's around five more inches of legroom versus the Lexus RX uh, 350H, this car's main competitor. Uh, so there's just a ton of space for me to stretch my legs, to cross my legs as well. This is where I'd have the seat to drive. I also appreciate the fact that there's leather on this portion of the seat. You have two USB charging ports on each side. So there's a total of four back here, which is nice. You also have your two level, I'm sorry, three level heated seats. You have rear seat air vents, which are traditional air vents. I appreciate that. You can see you have two storage pockets in each of the seats. And then if you fold down this armrest, you can see there's two cup holders here, another little bit of storage over here. And then in terms of the headroom space, you can see a pretty good amount of headroom, even though the sunroof does take up a little bit of space. But overall, again, aside from it missing just retractable shades and ventilated seats, this is definitely among the biggest and best back seats that you're gonna find in the segment. So here we are. It's been about four months since I first had a chance to drive the all new Nautilus when I was back out in California in Palm Springs earlier this year. In fact, I've seen the new, Nautil not, new, the new Nautilus uh, right in the studio last year when Lincoln first revealed this thing. And I have to say, when I first saw this car, I was simply blown away now getting a chance to actually spend a week with the new Nautilus and talk about its technology, its driving dynamics. It really has just solidified my initial first impressions. This is an excellent, very impressive, game-changing luxury SUV for Lincoln. And it really starts the moment you get behind the wheel because this model that we're driving is the hybrid variant. It's the first hybrid ever for the Nautilus nameplate. And it's also a new powertrain. So we have a two liter turbo up front paired up with two electric motors. It's a full hybrid, but not a plug-in hybrid connected to an eCVT making 310 combined horsepower. That sounds like a very good amount of power on paper. It's not class leading, but it'll do around 30 uh, 30 mpg as well, which is excellent uh, fuel efficiency. But the last time I 0 to 60 tested this car, I was out in California, and I believe I got 6.8 seconds. So let's go ahead and see what we can get this time. It's in its excite mode, um, 
we'll go ahead and we'll floor it, brake torque it. Doesn't feel all that impressive, at least when you do it that way, but once you get it going, man, this car accelerates quickly. Zero to 60 in 6.6 .6 seconds. So it's a smidge quicker versus when I first tested this out in California. I'll try it up ahead again to see if uh, if I brake torque it, or if I don't brake torque it, torque it, it, it makes a difference. The one thing that really surprises me, however, is the refinement of this powertrain. The engine is very, very smooth and quiet. Even when you're pushing the engine kind of hard, this is where, you know, the, the way this car accelerates reminds me a lot of the Lexus and Toyota hybrids, but it doesn't have the same kind of thrashy buzziness that you get from the Toyota and Lexus four-cylinder naturally aspirated engine. And that's kind of the beauty with Lincoln using a turbocharged engine and I guess they're using also a ton of sound deadening materials because this thing sounds really refined when you actually start pushing it. So it, it actually really surprises me how well this car accelerates. Let's try accelerating here again this time. Again, it's a nice acceleration rush of power that's smooth 7.05 there that's with it more going slightly uphill i'll try another time uh up ahead there where it's also flat surfaces uh, to see if we can consistently get 6.6 .6. but overall what you're going to notice is Yes, it doesn't sound or feel like an enthusiast-oriented SUV, but that's okay for me because that's not the point of the of Lincoln or the Nautilus. This brand doesn't try to be a performance brand, which I really much appreciate. They're honest about you know their roots and what they're trying to attain by going with their new you know, these new generation of vehicles. I mean, in terms of handling dynamics, it's certainly still very fine. Uh, it's competent. It feels comfortable. The steering is electric, and it. You know, the ch changes directions pretty quickly. The suspension is very soft, uh, which is not a great thing for handling dynamics, but it's not like ungainly. It doesn't feel unsafe. It just feels like you're pil piloting around a vehicle that would rather be, you know, driving a lot uh, smoother in a sense where it doesn't want to be, uh, you know, with a stiff suspension. You just want to be able to just comfortably enjoy a good ride quality as well. You don't want to be, you know, dealing with a stiff ride. You do have a 22 inch wheel on this car and the wheels do, you know, have very thinner or thinner sidewall protection. But you know what? I did notice that the ride quality is still very good. We have adaptive dampers, but no air suspension in this vehicle but uh, it just glides over the road imperfections nicely. Now, if you guys want an even more comfortable ride, I would recommend looking at the smaller 20s or the 21 inch wheels. Uh, that'll give you a little bit better ride quality. But overall, you know, it's very quiet. Uh, the engine is refined and quiet. The transmission is smooth, the power delivery is smooth, the ride quality is smooth, and there's very little road, wind, and engine noise coming through the cabin. So it's a shocker. I was not expecting the you know high levels of refinement that you get with this car. Now, put my foot down here. The all-wheel drive system is different versus Toyota's in the sense that it, there is a mechanical linkage that goes from the engine back to the rear axle. So it can send up to 50% of the torque to the back versus you know Toyota and Lexus have a separate E-axle at the back or electric motor at the back that doesn't quite give you that perfect 50-50 you know, power distribution. So you're gonna notice the rear will kind of put its power down a little bit harder in turns and you can actually make the rear wheels spin a little bit, uh, which is again, making the car feel a lot more potent than it actually is. But this time we'll just floor it, no brake torquing, we'll see what we can get here. Definitely feels a little sluggish at first, but then it's just a continuous wave of power 6.7 seconds there, so 6.6, .6, we'll take that as our quickest time. I think that's perfectly adequate. I will say that it's a little bit faster versus like a Lexus RX 350H, but it is about a second slower than the Lexus RX 500H F Sport Performance. So this car fits right in between the RX 500H F Sport and then of course an RX 350H. So it's kind of nice how Lincoln is providing that middle ground. I think that's what's going to really, you know, appreciate a lot of buyers is just being able to do that. So I'm gonna switch the drive mode here back into its normal setting. Uh, there are like six different drive modes and this is where the steering gets a little bit lighter, the suspension gets a little softer, the transmission tries to, you know, go into its higher ratios a little bit more to get you, help you get better gas mileage. And this is just a comfortable cruiser. The steering wheel is, you know, easy to, you know, point the car in the direction you want it to go. The seats are also really comfortable. I love these 24-way perfect position seats. Usually I've always had an issue with Lincoln seats. They've, they've had too many adjustments to where I couldn't find a comfortable driving position. These seats are definitely great. Uh, the padding is really cushy. 
the massage function works really well. The heated and cooled function works really well. Uh, I also love the digital scents. I love this Mystic Forest scent here. It's just one of my favorite scents. It just wafts a perfume into the cabin and it makes the car feel like a much more upscale premium environment. You can also change out those cartridges to different scents uh, if you'd like. Lincoln actually charges you, I think, $75 per cartridge, depending on whenever the scent runs out. Visibility is also really good. I can see out of the front, the side, the rear quite nicely. No digital camera review mirror. I'm surprised to see that's not on the option lot list here. And of course, that massive 48 inch display. I thought that display would be horribly distracting when you're driving, but you know what? I got used to it almost instantly. It's really easy to just kind of look down just at a glance and see your speedometer right there. Your GPS is there. You can customize that side over there. I have it for trip computer, for weather, and for audio information, which I think is perfect. And it's just really great to just look down, see what I need to see, and then look back on the road. And then when you need to interact, you do it through this screen over here, which is the perfect distance for me to be able to just kind of touch the screen and you know in, interact with the actual infotainment system. So this has all been an unexpected su surprise. I didn't expect this to have such a great infotainment system and it also worked pretty flawlessly in my week's worth of testing. And this interior build quality has been way better than any other Lincoln that I've had before. I mean, there wasn't a single squeak or rattle in this interior. And remember, this car is assembled in China. It's not assembled in North America or Mexico. But with a shocker to me is the build quality is the best build quality I've ever experienced in a Lincoln product. So it shows you that I guess the Chinese you know, factory that's building this car, they've got you know, the build quality and the tooling right because the car feels expensive. It feels extremely well made and I wasn't expecting that. Now in terms of the fuel efficiency in my week's worth of testing, I averaged around 30 uh, miles to the gallon in mixed driving. That's in purely city driving, which is excellent. It's pretty much bang on with the EPA's targets. On the highway, it actually did a little bit better for me. I got 33 MPG in my uh, a longer highway uh, drive, which again, is still very good. Uh, combine that with the you know larger fuel tank and this car will do around 600 miles of range on a full tank, at least theoretically. In my actual testing, I was doing a, a tick under 500 miles of range, which is still excellent. So this is part of the reason why I'm really happy that Lincoln decided to just go with a traditional gas or hybrid powertrain as opposed to making this car fully electric. I love the fact that it's not fully electric, the, the fact that it's a hybrid. It's one of the best hybrid powertrains that I think you'll find in the segment. And it really does split the difference between a Lexus RX 350H or an RX 500H F Sport Performance. I wasn't expecting this. I wasn't expecting the level of refinement and quietness from this cabin. Um, so this has been a really nice surprise. Lincoln is serious about moving the brand further and further, distancing it itself away from its more humble Ford roots. And with this new Nautilus, it gets me super excited because if this is just the beginning, you can expect this design language and this powertrain refinement, this build quality, I'm hoping to eventually trickle its way into other uh, Lincoln products. So with just under 24,000 Lincoln Nautilus models sold in America in 2023, this vehicle has always been either the best-selling or second best-selling Lincoln here in the States. The Corsair and the Nautilus constantly trade places for top seller status. But after spending the full week with the all new second generation Nautilus. I mean, technically this is the third generation because remember it traces its roots back to the Lincoln MKX from 2007. I have to say, I wasn't expecting the Nautilus to be this good. I mean, typically in the past, I've always really liked Lincoln's attempts at trying to push the brand further up market with the new Navigator, the Aviator, of course, the Corsair. But this new Nautilus really starts a new chapter because as you guys saw, the hybrid powertrain was the biggest surprise for me. It has Toyota Lexus levels of refinement and the gas engine is even quieter and smoother versus the last Lexus RX that I tested. It also got really great fuel economy, 30 MPG in all city driving, 33 on the highway, over 500 miles of range in my actual testing the real world, which is excellent. It also is designed to run on regular if you need to put regular in it. The infotainment system also, game changer. I love the Lincoln digital experience. The software didn't have any glitches for me in my week's worth of testing. The build quality was also solid. And remember, this car is built in China, so it really shows you that they're really stepping up their build build quality and you really got used to that big 48 inch display. It's not distracting. It kind of fits into, you know, the dashboard you know, layout of it very nicely to where you can kind of glance over and see your information really well. The seats are also typically I've, all, I've always complained about Lincoln seats having too many adjustments, but I found a really great driving position. The massage feature works well. The digital ascent experience works really well. It smells so good inside that car. It just makes you feel like you're driving a special vehicle and there's so much interior space from the trunk to the massive back seat. Even though this car isn't what I would say a sporty vehicle. It's not designed for enthusiasts, but it's just designed for luxury buyers. And I think that's exactly what Lincoln needed. It was to stick with their roots. They're known for building luxury cars. 
And with this brand new Nautilus, they've really raised the bar for me uh, for a midsize two row luxury SUV. In fact, if I had this car back to back with a Lexus RX, I actually might pick the Lincoln because that's just how good the Lincoln is. I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was, but it truly is. Now, if you guys are looking to put your hands or put one of these in your driveway, what's it gonna cost? Now, the 2024 Nautilus starts at around $50,400. Now, if you guys wanna order a 2025, they are already available to order. Lincoln says they should be in dealership showrooms by the end of this year. The price of the 2025 model has gone up by about $1,200, so it now starts at around $51,790. That's actually not bad considering a Lexus RX also starts around $50,000, and MDX also is around $50,000 as well. If you want like a BMW X5, that's going to cost you at least $65,000, so there's a ton of value here with the Lincoln. Now, of course, if you want to step up to the trim levels, there's basically the base, Premier, there's the Reserve, which is what I'm showing you here, and then there's the all-in black label model. The black label model definitely pushes the Nautilus into a territory that's very much in a space that's comfortable with the European luxury brands. Uh, the reserve for 2024 started at around 55,000. The reserve price has gone up to around 61,000 for 2025, and that's because they got rid of the base reserve one package. They now all come standard with the reserve two package. My test car has the reserve three package, which basically tacks on $10,000 on top of the $55,000 price tag, but it includes a lot of things like the massaging seats, the 28 speaker Revel sound system, the panoramic Vista roof, of course. The jet appearance package that I'm showing you here also is around $3,000. Highly recommend that if you guys really like the black accents as opposed to the chrome. All in with destination charge, my test car here comes in at around 72,525. So yes, 72 grand makes this about the same price as the last Lexus RX 500h F Sport Performance that I tested. And while the Lexus is a little bit quicker in terms of zero to 60, this gets better gas mileage, around six MPG better versus the Lexus. It has acceleration that's in between the RX 350H and the RX 500H, which I think six and a half seconds is plenty fast for most people. And the technology will just continue to wow people. So I really, I'm hoping that eventually Lexus will introduce something that'll also wow you because while their cars are definitely playing it safe, Lincoln really pushes the envelope on this car and it really makes you thinking, you know, what is Lincoln going to be doing for their next generation of vehicles? Now, I also want to point out that if you want the black label trim with basically all the bells and whistles and a better interior color versus the black that I'm showing you here, that can easily balloon the price to over $82,000. So 10 grand more for the black label is a little bit rich for my taste, but if you can get a reserve model like this and spend just around 70 grand, I think it's a nice alternative to a lot of its European and Japanese rivals. And I'm hoping with this you know, build quality with the car being built in China that it'll prove that this car has a much better build quality in the long term, but only time will tell if Lincoln is able to improve on that aspect. Well, with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2024 Lincoln Nautilus. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.